What is going on guys? We are back with another video today. We are doing another rebuild on Madden 22. This time though, it's going to be a fantasy style rebuild. Haven't done many of those in a while, even though that's kind of what we started with when we, uh, you know, started doing rebuilds on the channel. And then we moved to realistic and then we did the challenges and, you know, it is what it is. But if you don't know what that means, because you're used to us just trying to, well, some of you guys aren't even used to me trying realistic. They'd be like, uh, why didn't you sign Devante when you have 390 plus wide receivers with 5 mil cap space, idiot? It's like, realistic style means signing players that I think are actually going to be there. A guy like Devante could be there, but like if I'm the Jets, I don't see him going to the Jets. Uh, same with like a guy like, uh, let's say, Lamar Jackson. He goes to free agency. Is that going to happen? If he's in the 90s, that means he's still playing well? No, it's not going to. But in this one, there is nothing that is holding us back. If Aaron Rodgers is in free agency and I want him, I'm taking him. If there's a guy in there that I want, I'm taking him. Devontae, speaking of, could be a guy we take as, well, if we can even afford it, because Indianapolis have been making some interesting decisions, as this team does need wide receiver de desperately. Of course, trades are not off limits. The only thing, in my opinion, that is off limits is just clearing the cap space. That's something I won't do because that's just blatantly cheating. Whereas signing a free agent that you don't expect to be there, that's not cheating. It's a part of the game. If you get the most points and they want to join you, that's fair. Trading, maybe the trade system isn't the perfect system, but... If I'm trading legitimately, you know, it's fine. Also, I suppose changing players to punters or kickers, none of that, obviously. If it's if I'm trading for Tom Brady and he joins the team on a trade, even if it doesn't seem fair, it's it's fair because, you know, the game allowed it. So one of the big things that is super unrealistic but I will be doing is trading Carson Wentz off to anyone that wants him, literally anyone as far as running backs go. I don't need Marlon Mack. There's a bunch of other players that we probably don't need. T.Y. Hilton might be on the trade block. We are going to go kind of ham here, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. I might do more of these because these are kind of fun instead of having to always think, oh, is this fair? Is all this? I want to do what I want to do sometimes. Damn it. The Saints want him. Ironically enough, also the, uh, the Eagles want Carson Wentz. <laughs> if I can make a trade for that, I will do it. I do not give a damn. Oh, they fix right tackles. The right tackles exist. Oh my god, I'm so excited. If you're excited like I am, leave a like and subscribe. <laughs> that's, that's you don't have to, trust me. But I would appreciate it. Also, follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. If you uh, enjoy the streams, which we'll be doing one later tonight, uh, if you guys enjoy them, the best way to find out about them is either follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care, or on PK or Plays. Because I'm not going to be doing video announcements on this channel anymore. I'm just going to do community tab announcements or just the one that Twitter slash Twitch does when I go live. So all those things would be massively appreciated as uh, I am really struggling to find some sort of value to get Michael Thomas, who I do want. The problem is I don't think they really care, right? Like, I don't think they actually care about our players. Like, they don't actually want Wentz, right? If this was a decent quarterback, you could pretty much get anything for them whereas Lattimore I mean even he is like a star dev he's okay but he's nothing massive however I would love to have him and I think he's great he's massive and it costed us two second round picks in Carson Wentz but I'm all about that as we get an 87 overall Marshawn Lattimore which if we get rid of Rocky Sin or Rocky Sin, Xavier Rhodes and TJ Carey might actually be able to get some of that value back the question is does anyone want these guys of course Rocky they want, even though, I mean, he's not that developable, to be honest, but see if we can actually try to get a wide receiver. I didn't expect to get Jerry Judy that easily. I'll be honest with you. I will say the other guys were red interest, so it might have been actually a fair trade, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, okay. Oh, we got some interest. There's some teams that are interested. So I was looking for player value. I really couldn't find it. So we're going to try to cheese in and get lucky with a team like the Steelers, who may be a little overrated. Mac, a 6 this and a 7 next year for 25. Of course, the draft pick projections mean a lot. So if they're projected high, it's not going to be super easy to get those players. And there's not a damn team that wants T.Y. Hilton or Jack Doyle. Wow. We're also going to add Juju Smith-Schuster to the team because apparently wide receiver is not that hard to get. Of course, it did cost us our left tackle, but, I mean, Eric Fisher is literally like a one-year player at this rate. We trade Ture, Zach Pascal, and a third this year for TJ Hawkinson. Uh, and what else do we have? We need a quarterback. I don't know if we're going to be able to get one. Uh, I'm going to try to find some, like, randomer maybe. T.Y. Hilton, once again, no one really wants him. We could easily just roll with Judy Schmiss-Schuster and Pittman. 
aka Paris Campbell as well. Uh, maybe try to trade off the tight ends. Uh, overall, I mean, we're looking okay. We do have some needs, obviously, but I think we did well. It's just that quarterback position. We could go for Macaroni Jones here. Like, what is Hines worth to them? Green interest. Damn, they know that he's young, but, like, really? Okay. I'm, I'm not going to... I'm leaving. This is a bit of a debatable one because we're getting Minka Fitzpatrick, which is, a, which is a great trade, but we're trading off our own first-round pick, which we do not have a quarterback yet for. Uh, we do have other stuff we can try and trade off. Like, Julian Blackman isn't going to be one of them, but Kari Willis can definitely be one of them. We can trade off no corners. Um, yeah, maybe we just, just straight up sold. I don't know. We trade Willis straight up for Big Ben, and, I mean, it's not a great look. But we'll likely look for a quarterback uh, in the draft. If we can get one more first-round pick, that would be beautiful. Uh, even though Pittman's not really the fastest guy in the world, we still likely will look to keep him over Campbell. So we trade Campbell, T.Y. Hill, in a third next year for 46 from the Dolphins, which I will not be keeping. We're going to do whatever we can to gain one more first-round pick. Two first-round picks is, I mean, it's okay. It could be worse, obviously, but it's nice to at least get two first rounds, especially when we basically exhausted all of our options for the future. We got 46, Tyquan Lewis, and Jack Doyle to the Vikings for pick 28, and I do not know if we can make any more moves. And we get Baker and Austin Jackson for Al Woods, Davis, and Hunley, which is kind of brokenly good. Like, Austin Jackson, I believe, is start of element trade. Which he is, automatic starter. And Jerry Judy gets his breakout. He actually, I swear, they want you to get the breakouts. He had one before that. It was a tandem one. He didn't get it, so I ignored it. This week, he did get it. And he gets the superstar, of course, with 4K XP. Do we have re-signings? Oh, God, why did we trade for Lattimore again? <laughs> we gotta pay him. Uh, as far as the re-signings go, you know, in our realistic ones, I try to bump it. A lot of the running backs are like a five-year 25. We try to at least make it like almost 10 mil per year if they're actually worth it. Lattimore, though, if the contract says a one-year 10 for like a 99 overall, they're getting a one-year 10. Mark Lewinsky, we could probably do better, but a two-year 13 is very fair. Ficus plant. Really just thought we would have had other players. Re well, we do have a lot of players resign, just not any good ones. So I suppose the money's right for now. All right, had a good start of the season, then we choked it. Do we do the full choke? And we did. We absolutely choked. Of course, we you know we don't have our pick anymore, but I would imagine it's like pick 18 or so. So I'm not super mad with it. But let's take a look at the schedule and show you guys where we choked, which I believe was like right around midseason. You can see here, I think that's seven wins, five, six, seven, and three. We lost four in a row, won one, and then lost the final two. I think if we would have beat the Jags there, we would have had the division absolute sell. Let's take a look at how the quarterback played, which is obviously Big Ben. Not bad, actually. 4,500 yards, 34 touchdowns, 14 picks. Turns out with a good O-line, anything is possible. Taylor, not bad. Would have liked more, but still it's fine. Judy could go to X-Factor. Not a bad season for Juju Smith-Schuster. TJ Hawkinson, not bad. And then Pittman, not bad either. And, oh, Jonathan Taylor, though. Those numbers, I like them. As far as, actually, let's take a look at O-line because we did have, like, the best O-line. And, yeah, okay, well, that's, that's the way it goes. Kenny Moore, not bad. With a lot of tackles. Okariki, not bad. Baker, not bad. Sack totals. Look at Buckner go off with 17 and a half. Quiddy Pay, the rookie, only two. Oding Bayo, who actually started only one. So, of course, the top needs being cornerback and quarterback, without a doubt. I know it sounds, it almost sounds like I just said the same exact position. A lot of more with three picks. Minka, Kirk Pat, or Fitzpatrick with two. Not bad. Blank and sh I mean, this team looks pretty good. I mean, we didn't super deserve a playoff spot. We were close, though. I mean, if we would have got in, I don't think anyone would have bat an eye at it. Uh, let's take a look at our season. Any awards at all? Quarterback. Uh, oh, yeah, we're in the AFC. What the hell am I thinking? <laughs> I, I think in a blue. I think a Giants. I don't know. But I was about to say, we actually had a pretty good season for some of our guys. So not seeing them on the list is a little surprising. Uh, best quarterback, Big Ben's got to be up there, right? Number nine, not bad. Rushing, number six. Receiving all the way at number two. O-line, number three. I'm surprised there wasn't more than just one. Buckner, the best D-lineman. That's what I'm talking about. At least we got some award. DB, 
Not even top 10. Okay, number 9 for Lattimore. Seems like it was a decent decision. And then Blankenship all the way down at 8. Only missed 2 out of 14 kicks, but... I guess it's still enough. And did we lose two pieces of our our coaching staff? I mean, Marlon Burgess seems perfectly fine. Now, Garrett Pratt, on the other hand, I think we can do better. I do kind of like Glenn Powers. Screw, we're still going to go with Glenn Powers, I think. Let's see. Pass blocking for tight ends. Impact blocking. Boost run blocks. He's good for blocking. Good for catching. Stamina boost release yeah i mean that's not bad to be fair uh we're gonna go for him and the buccaneers win the super bowl super original super bowl there yeah love it let's take a look if we add any dev ups big ben if he's even still here did not dev up i'm a little surprised by that jerry judy didn't dev up but you know it's x factor is a lot to ask for defensively any dev ups and i don't think so not even baker or kenny moore so i mean not a bad season but no dev ups makes it really bad, and of course, with these, uh, these what is it called, coordinators and all that, our boosts are very high. I might actually have to start looking at uh, changing the modifier on that to be lower, because, I mean, those are very, very good boosts for a team that just came off of a losing season. And where's Juju? Like, where, where was this? It just showed up now. Of course, we should be fine to be able to pull it off, but like, excuse me, can I not have this happen to me? Thank you. Uh, of course, Juju accepts the contract. Big Ben will be gone. He had a really good year for us, but, I mean, he's 72 overall now. And I don't know what our draft picks are, but we had two of them. Hopefully, those two can equal some sort of halfway decent quarterback if there's not one in free agency that we can sign. And, yeah, we will have a lot of positions we will need to fill in general for backups because that's a lot of guys that need a contract that we just kind of let go of. So wide receiver was a need for us. It's not really anymore. Devontae Adams is cool and all, but we just we don't really need him. A two-year 46 is not bad for Taron Armstead, but another guy that I think we should just let go. Uh, I mean, obviously these aren't our players, but you know what I mean. We could obviously go for pretty much anyone here, especially since we don't need to pay a quarterback for some time. Uh, they let Hines go, though. That's a little surprising. Uh, there's some names here we might take a gander, but I don't imagine we're going to sign anyone here. So we signed J.K. Scott, the punter, and Malik Hooker, who I think will actually play outside linebacker for us. He's got the size for it. Why not trade Bobby Okariki off for something as he's going to be needing to be paid anyways? Uh, what else do we want to do? I suppose look for a damn quarterback, isn't it? Which we do have two quarterbacks. They are both medium second rounders. I don't know what the <laughs> middle of the second round. Uh, if I had to guess who is better i'd probably put my eggs in the basket of quincy he's also taller but realistically it's one of those situations we may go based on i don't know they're both nah i probably will just go for quincy let's go in the late second or something like that or late first anyways all right so we have pick 10 and 18 not quite what we were looking for there's a really good pass rusher here javon simmons but we also have some second round guys and the main factor is we do not have a whole lot of draft picks going forward for this year, next year, whatever. I think we're going to trade down to 19, see what we can get, and then start taking players from there. The Falcons are giving us a third this year to move back three spots, which I think is actually not too far off of reality, right? Pick 10 is, is pretty damn high. And the Ravens are giving us way too good of an offer. 30, 31, obviously 31's next year, and a third this year to move back, you know, once again, to the pick 30 in this round let's take a look at what they land and they get Javon Simmons very good trade as once again we had an opportunity to take him again passed on it again and then of course pick 30 will be our quarterback uh, we do have some other options Demarcus Dodson don't think we need him though uh, Javier Lamb is probably my number one at this point we could get rid of Stewart for honestly like a high second realistically uh, which we can end up taking Trevor Lowry for so uh, I think things are lining up pretty nicely here. I am looking to end up taking Lamb with this pick. Javier Lamb, please be good. Otherwise, it's going to be a bust. And he is a 77 overall hit, and that is a massive W. Super speed. He could even play on the edge if he really wanted to. That is a deadly duo, him and Buckner, which I think we might actually trade Stewart now. I don't think there's anything else. You know, once again, Dodson would be nice and all, but we'll just look after the draft, see how good he is. Dominic Stewart's also really solid, but the other guy we got, even though he's a little slower, does look like he has higher potential anyways. 
All right, so pick 30. We do also have Sammy Carroll, uh, you know, as a late third projected player. He does look good, but I think Quincy is just the best player. Super fast, super solid, mid-second, mid-second. Uh, you can't really argue against uh, Quincy. So, Thomas Quincy, just be hidden, even if you're star, and I'll take it. 72 overall hidden, decent throwing ability, really good break sack, very fast, even faster than I would have thought. That's a win. We have ourselves a potential franchise quarterback. And we're going to trade Grover Stewart straight up for pick 33. Of course, Stewart's an 84 overall, so uh, even though he's 28, that's perfectly fair. Uh, very good trade for both sides, especially for the Chargers who have had uh, DT issues for quite some time now. Uh, and of course, Doug Ferguson is still there. We do need an edge rush. Oh, what do I mean still there? This is actually the guy I wanted, and I almost sold, actually. Not that there wasn't other options anyways, but obviously by far the best. Oh, we also do have Greg Short, though, which we could actually save a little bit on because that wide receiver, obviously, we want him. Trevor Lowry. How good is the other guy? Late first. I mean, they're both pretty similar. I think we could probably just wait until one of them goes. I think we're going to have to take Doug Ferguson. He looks absolutely nuts. Doug Ferguson is the pick. And normal dev, but obviously a 77 overall. Uh, we've had guys like this before that have worked out for us. 87 power move. You can't go wrong with that. I know he's normal, but if he gets a dev up, you know, breakout early, it's better than star, you know. And I hope Lowry's there of the two. Oh, I don't remember the other guy's name. But obviously, whoever's there will take. We don't really need a guy, but of course, uh, Pittman really doesn't fit as the number three anyway. So Hobbs and Lowry. I will say, if Lowry goes first, I might let Hobbs go. Just saying. Sammy Carroll, 69 overall to the Giants. Leave it to the Giants to draft the wrong player. Jimmy Shelton, another guy. The two guys that just went back-to-back -back were actually players we had on our board. They look good. Uh, Montgomery, the other quarterback, 72 overall as well. I wonder if he's hidden as well or not. And our guys are still there. DeMar Nelson goes Hobbs, please. Yes, so Hobbs is first. We're going to be trading to the Saints now, who actually do need wide receiver. Maybe it's a little risky, but Pittman straight up. They also do have 47, so at the end of the day, can they still use that pick? Is that fair, though? When did Pittman go? Ah, uh, he went in the th pick 34. He's still really good. Ooh, they don't want him enough, though. Okay, well, well, we'll make it better. Just wait a minute. Pittman in a fifth this for 46, which, of course, we'll be taking a wide receiver ourselves. This time, a uh, an actual slot guy. It actually makes sense on the team. So we pretty much replaced the entirety of this, uh, of this receiving group. Trevor Lowry looks like a good pick. Hopefully, he's not miss. I can't miss, and he isn't. Literally the same overall and dev as Pittman, but a completely different type of player and the player we needed the most. Yeah, we're kind of crushing the draft right now. I know one, our one pass rusher that we really need badly is normal, but still an absolute win he is. Melvin McAllister I was thinking about going for, but, I mean, Austin Jackson's decent enough. Could be a risk because there's a middle linebacker. There's a late third uh, with a late first projection, but it said late third. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to just hope that he's here, and he is. Josh Hood looks like a can't-miss player. Let's see what we land. And normal, unfortunately, but 74 overall. Definitely a good pick. Not someone we necessarily needed, but it's just one of those best available pick type of situations. And you can also make that argument with Justin Harbour, but eh, I don't think we need him that much. Not really much we can do with him unless we put Minka at corner, which I don't think we will be doing. J.J. Brewer is the center I had on my list. Wasn't going to take him, but interesting to see that he's decent. Mid-fourth, I mean, running back's not that big of a need, but at the same time, that guy looks really solid. We're going to go with Mr. Elton Camp, the backup running back, who is a 77 overall hidden. Good all-around player. Really just like a slower uh, Jonathan Taylor. It's it's a good pick, obviously. And I don't want to lose the DT, so if he's here at the start of the fourth, we'll make a trade-up with our fourth-round pick as well. Chargers back again. So we trade a fifth round next year and Bobby Okariki for 97 this and a fourth round next year from the Chargers. I'd say they actually probably won that trade a little bit more than we did, but we just don't need Bobby anymore. We got that linebacker we just drafted. And of course, we have the uh, safety Malik Hooker back and going to try him out at linebacker. Javon Anthony, not really a need, but once again, super best available type pick and 76 overall hidden. I mean, he's really just as good as the guy we drafted in the first round. Debate even needing him, but, you know, here we are. 
And then with the 14th pick in the 14 uh, in the fourth round, don't really need a guard, but if he's still there, I'm going to take him. This guy looked pretty solid, and he is still there. Uh, Luke Spence, young, good talent, great, good skills, hoping for the best, and we get another hidden. We're actually crushing the draft right now. There wasn't a single player that we technically lost on. Like, there was nobody. Like, that normal dev D lineman, yeah, I would like, you know, Superstar or X Factor or whatever since we don't have one, but, I mean, that power move's insane. That's 87. It would be nice to see the other guys, though, because there were a lot of other pass rushers that we obviously passed on, and... Screw it, 7th rounder, whatever. Justice Knox, cool name. Not very good, and he's older. You can never have enough backups, though. Screw it. So you know the drill. We are going to take a look at our players that are going to be guaranteed starters. So Lamb is automatically the number two. I don't know if the other guy will be better than him for Dev, but whether he is or not, we're going to say it right now. Guaranteed starter for Lamb. Only star, unfortunately, but, I mean, still a really, really good player. All right, let's take a look at our quarterback, Thomas Quincy, the starter. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. And, I mean, he's good, but only star, which, I mean, doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. Trevor Laurie, the automatic number three no matter what. Wearing number 80. Eh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm going to change it to, like, something in the, the, the teens, the tens. And he's a superstar, so that is a massive win there. Not that it really matters. He'll always be like the slot guy unless we were... Ooh, okay, I guess you're wearing something in the 80s after all. I guess number 85. Screw it. Uh, no one there. The running back, Elton Camp. The backup running back to be exact. Number 36. Not the worst number. I'll allow it. I'll allow number 36. And let's take a look at his dev, which is star. Not really super surprising there. He's already good enough the way it is. Then we had two more hiddens. Javon... Anthony, the number three DT, could be the number two DT after the season if he has a higher dev than Lamb. We'll see. And he is star as expected. And then I'm not even... I'll look at the guard, actually. There was a rebuild recently enough where the, the center we had was expected to be a star, but he actually was superstar. And Luke Spence, yeah, star. It's nothing, nothing surprising. Quarterback went number one overall to the Chargers, Julian Patterson. Um, did they get rid of a Herbert, or is that still just an issue where they're going to keep taking quarterbacks just because they're very good value? They were all red interest, so yeah, only star. Nothing really spectacular there. You know, not something I was really looking to get. So here's Javon Simmons, the guy that we were going to go for, but I felt like we could have got more, which in the end we did. If he's anything higher than star, maybe we sold, but if he's only star, then I do not care. And he is, yeah, star, so I don't care. Here's Demarcus Dodson, and he's only normal. That's an L. I mean, the pass rush is one thing, because it's not really that hard to dev up. But, uh, yeah, that's a huge L that they just took. So here's Orlando Gregory, also normal. Uh, wow, is he a DT? He is a DT type, strength 86, so fair enough. Jimmy Sheldon, hidden as I would have expected. Uh, solid player, similar to the DTs that we took. Let's take a look if he had a better dev than Star, though. One of these guys has got to be like an X-Factor or a Superstar and Imagine. And it's not that guy. And here's Greg Short, who I believe is the last one of our bunch. And yeah, all the edge rushers were not like super great for dev. They're obviously good players, but they're not super great for dev. And then where's the quarterback that the Giants took? Was he better than ours? Oh yeah, this guy too, Mike Montgomery, also hidden. Uh, a little bit worse, but he might have had better dev. If he had Superstar or better, might have been a better pick. If not, though, then obviously we took the W. And he is a star development, so it really didn't matter too much. But here's the quarterback for the Giants. And, oh, Daniel Jones, how are you doing? We trade a six in Eason for a fourth-round pick from the Broncos. So here's the lineup for year two. Obviously looking like a really good squad. The tight end one spots. I mean, pretty much... All the skill position players seem to be intact. Maybe even the entire O-line. Right tackle, center, left guard, left tackle are fine. And Glowinski's here for another year or two. But Spence, the start of element left uh, right guard, can obviously replace him anytime. Defensively, could need a new number two corner because Kenny Moore, I mean, for one, he is getting up there in age, 27. And I believe they start regressing at 28 or 29. Uh, cornerbacks, that is. And he is on the shorter side. Uh, but, I mean... On paper, looks fine. Safeties look fine. Linebackers, a bunch of misfits like Baker and uh, Hooker. I don't know how they fit on this team, but here they are. Leonard, obviously, the uh, the anchor there, being paid a lot of money, let me tell you. Uh, and then D-line looks pretty set as well. Uh, 
maybe even two set with uh, Anthony here not even being able to play as the backup. We are having a very good start to the season. However, this is where things kind of go downhill because we actually are about to be broke as hell. Oh my god, could you not? We can't afford everyone, so let's just do it. Uh, I suppose a six-year deal for uh, Quentin, which the crazy part is... This is actually a steal for us. In real life, that is going to be even higher by, I mean, some crazy number. Make a Fitzpatrick, worth it, because you can obviously put him at corner on top of it if you really needed it over a safety, which we may actually do in the future. TJ Hawkinson, if there even is much of a future, to be honest, because it's one thing that sucks about doing fantasy styles is that it's really, really easy, as you can tell. Was, I mean, we didn't make the playoffs, but we are off to a pretty damn good start on the season and of course just in general the overalls are pretty good so far and headed to the playoffs we get the bye week we do at 13 and 4 we obviously fell off a little bit but overall still a really good season show you guys you didn't force any wins or anything like that uh beat the chiefs definitely not a bad season lots of the jags ravens uh, texans in chargers some really weird teams that probably shouldn't be losing to but Let's take a look at the numbers now. The quarterback, 46-20-41 for the touchdowns. Only five picks. Jonathan Taylor, really good year as well. 12-61 you know, with 10 touchdowns. Camp wasn't bad. Lowry, we put him in the slot, and apparently that's the juicer position here as, of course, he led the team in receptions and all that. Uh, well, not receptions, but yards and tied for the most touchdowns. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that he was in the slot. Maybe he's just really good. Hooker did really well. Baker did okay. Sack totals. Buckner down, but still good. Quiddy Pay with eight. Maybe he just robbed him a bunch of sacks. Uh, picks are okay. Kicking definitely rough, even though we gave him a five-year deal. Glad we did that. Lowry had himself a year. It would not surprise me to see him as a rookie of the year. Not that it's easy to win over quarterbacks. Well, I forgot about Quincy, but yeah, outside of Quincy, he would have won it. And speaking of Quincy, how did he, like, fare in general? He was the number two, so should be superstar. We had uh, Quentin Nelson with the uh, best offensive lineman thing. We could actually win it all right here, and if we do, we'll probably just try to win two. You know, we'll try to win uh, two within three years, so we'll do, like, a four-year rebuild. I will say, going against the Browns in the divisional, maybe a bit of a humbling experience as the Patriots are moving on to the next round. Not the easiest team to beat, but definitely loads easier than the Chiefs. Winner of this one may have a free shot. I don't want to you know, speak too soon on it, but there is a very good chance the winner of this game wins the Super Bowl or at least makes it to the Super Bowl. 14-10, not really that great of a performance. Really good, strong start, and then we just choked it. 21-10, to 10, and that should be a GG. I mean, if we're giving the Browns the work like this, I just, I mean, if the Patriots win, this would be like the upset of the century. And these two teams obviously have had some history over the years. Maybe not necessarily the same rosters, but still the teams are the teams. History is history. Quiddy Pay with two sacks. Malik Hooker with a pick. Nice to see him back with the team and striving. Striding? Striving. Yeah, that's the one. The 11-6 and six Patriots, who I would assume are a lower overall. 84 overall. We're in 89. The, uh, the Browns were in 88, I believe. We have the better team by far. They do have a couple of names themselves, but... Yeah, I mean, they're just not on our level, simply put. We beat them in, I would say, every position outside of Gilmore. But as a whole, if J.C. Jackson went to free agency, which I think he did, we might have a better group. And I forget every once in a while, of course, we are on last gen. I am not doing a next gen rebuild until they actually fix the damn game ever again. And I don't know why I said ever again, but I suppose with the way their track record is for fixing things, that might actually be a fair argument. I'm not reloading the game five times a season. Like, no thank you. Uh, as we gave up the ball early and gave up a touchdown, they are giving us the work. I will say a little bit of luck, so it's not over. 14-24, to 21-24. 21 to 24. I'm telling you, this team does not go away. It's looking good for the Patriots, but it's not over by a long shot. Come on, D. Do something. We cannot do anything. Maybe it is over. We got a score here. Come on. Get in there. Wow, that was a lot of clock wasted. I'm coming in. We deserve to win the Super Bowl here. I'm not saying, you know, saying I necessarily want to, but I suppose show you guys the, the beastliness that is us rebuilding in a fantasy style. 28 seconds. All the clock in the world for us to try and get back into this one. Of course, they have three wide receivers. If they actually throw this, that would be the biggest scam 
in the history of the world. It's Mac Jones, huge hit by Minka. Could have forced a fumble, which would have completely changed the game. All we needed is a field goal if we got a fumble there. Again, a little worried about the fact that they do have some receivers out there. I think we're fine. Just got to cover that left side. It's pretty predictable to go that way. And the fullback fumble. I don't think that was a legitimate fumble and actually got, you know, took another second off the clock. Timeout. What is this, a challenge? Really? I will say we did get an extra second back. I'm a little surprised that we actually did there. Not bad. I know there's some big bodies down there, but we have whoever Stone is. And Minka with another hit. Could have been a fumble. 20 seconds left. If they kick this field goal and they miss, anything is possible. They're going to go for this? Wait, uh, what? EA, how, um, what? What? Are they just like, I mean, it's not impossible, right? It's definitely not like something that couldn't or would never happen, but it's a very unlikely thing to happen, right? Like, you would be very rare to see a team do that to avoid a special team's blunder, which I can only imagine is the reason why, right? I, w I would assume. Really wish we could, like, get a penalty here. I don't think we're going to make this, and I don't care if it's PA thingy thing. No shot, and he knocks it out. We need Lowry in there bad. Oh, my God, Quincy deserves this so much. Look at him, six touchdowns. How could you ask for any more from him? And he's got a chance, and he's going to get stuck in bounds. Try to lead him out, and it went straight down the field. And that is going to end it. What an attempt. Oh, my Lord. They sold so hard. Mac Jones and Quincy went off. They absolutely went off. Unfortunately, there was a lot of turnovers, and we had more of them, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. I know Mac Jones played longer, but I would already imagine our guy is a higher overall than Mac Jones. I don't see how he would have been higher than Quincy. Mac Jones started as normal, wouldn't have started in year one. I'd actually say he's probably like 74, 75 overall, and of course... He's leading the Patriots to the Super Bowl because EA loves them. Patriots versus Panthers, and the winner of this one is, I mean, if they beat us, it would not surprise me to see them beat the Panthers, and they did. As far as DevOps go, Quincy goes to Superstar, not a super shocker. Uh, superstar development traits. Judy was already Superstar, and uh, Juju does not go up. Lowry does not go up. Uh, Malik Hooker, I believe, did go up in Dev. Unfortunately, Ferguson did, and I forgot we even had him for a moment because he really just did not show up this season at all. I don't even know if he had a single sack. Obviously, the team's really good. As far as what you could do to upgrade the team, maybe replace Baker, 26 years old, 81 overall. I don't remember what his contract is. He might have actually signed one with Miami. I can't remember, but, I mean, we obviously have him now. Let's take a look. Contractually, third year out of four. So, definitely seems like we can get rid of him. O-line, I mean, maybe look at a new right guard, but we have Spence, so... I don't know, there's really not much we can do to make this team better other than just splurge on something we don't need and potentially cripple the team for life. So we have 20 mil left to work with. Let's take a look at the team salary, see if there's anyone we can get rid of, see if there's anyone we have to pay. I can already see Taylor is one of them. Let's just go by most money. So uh, no one's really going up in value. I mean, there's like a mil or two, but we also are going down a few. Uh, Lattimore, we already paid. Baker is actually making a decent bit of money. Can we get rid of him? I would assume we can just, you know, we can clear him. Will we want to, though? I don't know. Kenny Moore, another guy that we can just straight up get rid of. So if there's a big name there, maybe. Glowinski would be someone we can't get rid of. Yeah, that's just not worth the money. So we do have some re-signings, of course. But overall, I mean, I think we can just... If we don't pay any more than $10 million for agency, we should be able to afford everyone we want. Tyreek Hill would be a nice, you know, add-on, but not someone we actually need. Kareem Hunt, DJ Moore, another guy that would be sick to have, but... Not needed. Mitchell Schwartz. There was like a 690 plus overall tackle. Maybe replace Austin Jackson with him. But overall, I'm not seeing it. I think uh, free agency is just going to be kind of just nothing for us. We trade 24 and a next year third to move up to 19. We are not there yet, but there's a early second corner that I do not want to lose. He's an early first projected, uh, or not projected, but talent grade. And of course, he is decently fast. Uh, our slot type corner, even though he's been playing number two, is probably going to be gone. It is not this guy. It is this guy, even though this guy's really not that much bigger. Uh, Dylan Claiborne, 
the name Claiborne was uh, once upon a time okay in the league. I regret it all. Uh, I will say he could play safety and move Minka to corner, which may be the move in the future. We'll see. We trade 30 this year and Anthony for 53 and 85 this year with 54 next year. They end up taking a tight end, which is debatable to say the least. And we are likely to take a center who will end up playing one of the other positions down the line. Uh, once again, another Claiborne, mid-second or late second, but looks technically better. It's hard to tell because this guy is all pass block while the other guy is all run block. Uh, 4 8 8 5 one, uh, 4 So, I mean, this 6-4 guy does definitely seem better. And he's also an early third. So, we're going to take Claiborne. 73 overall hit, and we may even take the other guy, too. We trade 85, 113, and 190 for 65, which will take the other center, which will pretty much... Lock us in long-term. Austin Jackson. I don't remember if we had to pay him or if he needs a contract, but we can trade him before then if this guy's hidden, which he is 72 overall. When you got talent like this just staring you in the face, you just got to take it. Two basically third-round centers that are both hidden that can play tackle or guard or whatever you need him to play. That's good. We're going to take Stefan Bruce. Not great, but a decent player. 69 overall, 85 power move, 87 strength. Really good replacement for... Uh, the guy we did just trade off. What was his name? Like Trayvon something? We give a fourth round next year for a fifth round this year because there is a solid looking corner. It's like a mid third grade. I don't know if he's any decent, you know, if any any good or not, but seems like he's value, you know, pretty valuable here. So, you know, if he will see 70 overall normal, I mean, he's okay. It is what it is. We trade Austin Jackson to the Buccaneers for their second round pick. He's super fair. It's just we need to pay him. And obviously with the two guys we have and the guard that we have waiting, there's no point not to. We're going to put the youngest tackle at starter or center at starter. So I believe it is now year three. The squad obviously looks really good. Kind of sucks that Juju's still start of elementary. It really hasn't done as well as the rest, but obviously he's still a very good talent. Uh, the number one tight end. Hawkinson's been okay, but his rating has obviously been very good uh, O-line, we have a new left tackle who has a lot more potential because, of course, he isn't starting as a 65 overall tackle, and I think he is also one year younger on top of it. Uh, O-line in general, though, is fine. Uh, Glowinski's still our best choice, so Spence will probably replace him next season, or maybe Falk will. Uh, it probably will be Falk because he's already, like, you know, overall too higher. Uh, everyone looks pretty damn good on offense, though. Defensively, got to get the right guard going. DT2 is an 80 overall. He's up there with the, the temp boost. I mean, it's a very good team. I don't know how Kenny Moore being a smaller guy playing the number two spot has actually affected us, but he is a good overall. So, I mean, we should make another nice run, maybe even a Super Bowl this time. Finally, Doug Ferguson, halfway through his sophomore year, gets the star and gets 5K XP. Let's go. Hey, what is this? Who is it? Okay, well, let's, let's be honest. Uh, I mean, the chances of him actually succeeding it probably pretty low but we'll take a look i suppose i just don't see it happening and where's the touchdowns where even is he this little liar he had four yards oh my god all right resigning the question is can we actually afford them as more than i thought there was going to be a four year 80 we'll wait on that because obviously taylor is the bigger name here is he uh is a very good running back in Sim. He's basically like a better version of Kareem Hunt in Sim. Julian Blackman, a very good player, but may let him go. We're definitely letting Kenny Moore go. And I guess you kind of have to pay Jerry Judy a six-year deal worth uh, quite a bit of money. Glad to re-sign. I'm not really so sure myself, but here we are. Yeah, the team's actually kind of getting broke a little bit, but it is what it is. Looking good, but I don't think we're going to have as good of a game or a season as last year's. The Texans are 13-4. We play the Raiders. Show you guys if we didn't force any wins or anything like that. I would imagine if I you know, I was going to do that, I'd probably give us at least a similar season to last year because we actually did kind of suck this year, especially in the last three games. But you can see on the top right or where the right of the screen was, Thomas Quincy not looking too bad. 53-50 pretty much for yards. 37 touchdowns. Could go to X-Factor here. Rushing, Taylor was really solid. Receiving, Judy went off. Glad we re-signed him. Juju over 1,000 touchdowns suck, but that's fine. Lowry was good. Hawkinson was good. Taylor was good. The offense was just lights out. They were insane. Defense, tackles are okay. Sack totals. Look at the DTs. Look at Ferguson. 
everyone but Quiddy Pay, realistically. And of course, you know me, I don't change the defensive schemes. Oh, Blankenship, though. Blankenship looking kind of rough because I just don't think it really matters. I think it's just all RNG. Any awards at all? We had number seven. We'd like to see where uh, our running back actually ranked, which would be at number five, a little lower than I thought. Number two for Judy. O-line number one and number six and number eight. D-line number two, number four. And surprised we didn't have uh, Ferguson on there. No D uh, linebacker. DB not on the list. And then kicker definitely not on the list. He was awful. But let's see it. The Raiders, year three. Could this be the year? I mean, we're 80. Uh, they're in 82. We're in 92. I mean, if we at least, I mean, we lose this one. That is just actual scams. But we'll see. Yeah, only 82 for the Raiders. How the hell do they make the playoffs? All right, going to the end of the game, I knew that uh, the Raiders would be kind of on that path. Like, maybe they have a chance very first season to uh, to make a play because, obviously, they have a decent team right away, but there's a lot of players that could be gone and, you know, might be and should be gone with their age specifically, their left guard, their right guard, their corner. There's a lot of names there, and yeah, you can see here, maybe even Derek Carr, depends on he, how he plays. We, of course, win. Not the cleanest win, but, you know, good enough. Quincy was really good. Rushing was awful, though. Uh, receiving was pretty damn good. Jonathan Taylor was decent in the receiving game. Sack totals, fair enough. I actually, you know, I wonder. You know, I wonder how it works. For a running back, if they go, like, like you see there, like 19 for, like, 45, but they go, like, 5 for 60, do you think they're just like, damn, dude, that's, that game sucked? Or do you think they're just like, well, I may, you know, I played my part. I would think if I was playing, I'd be like, you know, I'm supposed to run. Obviously, receiving is a part of my game too, but running is kind of the tough thing. Receiving isn't as hard necessarily, right? I mean, most receiving backs or running backs can receive the ball and get a lot of yards per catch nowadays. As we are facing the Chiefs, who are three overalls less than us, and it won't matter one bit. And the winner of this one plays the teams that we will lose to anyways. The Texans or the Jags. Uh, this could be like, you know, an AFC South reunion championship game. 21-14, not a bad start against the Chiefs. Only up by four. This is how we always play. We choke. Come on, offense. Thank you. They don't get the two points. You've got to be kidding me. You have absolutely got to be kidding me with this. Come on, pick six, dude. I don't even care. Pick six. And, of course, everyone's open. Just kick it deep, please. Okay, thank you. Oh, man, that sucks. Or it doesn't. Lowry is going to take it. The greatest play in playoffs history. Lowry for 91. I was debating on going down onto the left to try and, you know, I'll be honest, cheese it with the PA crossers. Andy Reid and the Chiefs can suck it. Oh, my God. I do not know if it's on all Madden or all pro. I will sh uh, check after this. If it's all pro, uh, it's going to be a little embarrassing because, <laughs> you know, it's not. I mean, it's not easy. If I had to try that 10 straight times, I don't know if I would score a touchdown even on all pro, but... Definitely a lot easier than All Madden. I don't even know if it's possible to kick return a touchdown on All Madden. Find out. Trevor Lowry, though. The GOAT. That, I mean, hands down. It's not even an overstatement. It would be the greatest play of all time. And okay, it is on It is on All Pro. So I should actually change it to All Madden real quick. At least I'm honest, right? I could have easily edited it and be like, see All Madden. And I could have edited the gameplay sliders. Wait, one, one sec. One sec. Bro. And on 100 tackling and pass coverage... With all Madden, that's insane. <laughs> oh, God. But still, all pro, I could literally try it. I will try it r the very first play of next game if we have a kick return, and I will try to see if I can get a touchdown. Well, I guess it is on all pro, all Madden now. I'm not going to switch it off. It is, just take my word for it. I'm not going to return a touchdown on all pro, all Madden, even freaking regular pro consistently. That was crazy no matter what the difficulty, as long as it's above rookie probably above pro as well which it was all madden uh, or all pro uh, 92 to their 82 the raiders kind of gave us the work the texans they did have the division so you never know but we should win right and the other side it is the panthers and the cowboys not you know the easiest opponents but of course the afc outside of this houston team is 
is definitely a bit tougher to run through. So if we can beat the teams we have here, I do not see why we shouldn't beat a Carolina Panthers or Dallas Cowboys team. And once again, we kind of choked that like this in the first game against the Raiders, I believe. It was, you know, we were smoking them, and then we somehow give up a lot of points, and we only make it a 14-point lead. This Colts team, man, we're kind of choke artists, but we obviously are doing well enough to make it to the Super Bowl. And it was just an offensive onslaught. I mean, nobody was stopping anyone on defense, which is kind of like doubled negatives might not actually mean what I think it means. That's actually nuts. My head actually kind of hurts. Like, the side of my head hurts from commentating that. That was that was pretty insane. You know what? I am actually going to go to All-Pro. I'm going to put it on All-Pro, and I'm going to try to return a kick, and I'll be dead-ass honest with you if I made a mistake or if it was just tough. I know a lot of you guys are like, well, will you, though? Panthers, 86 overall, of course, a team that we were going to use uh, in a franchise, and I was like, you know what? They're actually kind of good. It's really, outside of Sam Darnold, there's really not much to do for that team. I know they have some O-line needs, but... Overall, they are kind of set, and they have a lot of talent. Let's actually take a look at that talent and see if they have uh, all the players still that I would imagine they should. So quarterback, Sam Darnold, actually not bad. Probably star. Nope, normal. Still usable, though. Running back, obviously OP as hell. Uh, Tyreek, don't need him. Robbie Anderson's still there looking decent. Receiver could obviously go any way, but DJ Moore is the guy you keep. I would definitely re-sign him over Anderson. Tremble definitely has that potential. Just kind of comes down to how much you throw to him. Once again, O-line is kind of their issue, but pass rush, you know, D-line's insane. Hassan Reddick's insane. I wouldn't pay Chris Barnes, which would have kept DJ Moore on the team. Shaq Thompson, if you can get rid of him early, which I think you can, save some money there. You got sick corners. The safeties are pretty much done. There's not a whole lot you can do with that Panthers team that isn't already done. But regardless, playing the Panthers, if we lose this, I would be a little heartbroken. I mean, I wanted to win this in two or three years because, once again, it's a fantasy style. I haven't done one in ages. And we obviously built a pretty strong team out the gate, starting with, you know, a, kind of a middle of the pack, a little bit above middle of the pack team. Once again, I do want to try a return, so we're going to just basically give them free point. Oh, crap. I forgot they're going to need a score for that to happen. All right. I mean, I'm not saying I want them to score, but... Oh, is that us or them? Oh, are they scoring? They failed the kick? Come on, dude. You're going to score? Oh, and I'm... <laughs> We're actually selling the Super Bowl, like, slow simming this and giving them chances. Oh. All right, here we are. Here we are. Chance to return it. Lowry's back there. Everything's the same. I know it's a different team, but... If I actually score this touchdown, I'm going to be really mad at myself for kind of cheesing it. I mean, you've seen that. I mean, I almost played it the exact same way, and it was just nowhere near as open. It just wasn't even close. So say what you want. Maybe we just got really lucky. I don't know. But clearly it wasn't a guaranteed kick return touchdown. Huge touchdown there, speaking of. And I think it's been done. The Colts are Super Bowl champions over the Panthers. And let me be honest with you. As a Packers fan and a fan of, uh, you know, something new, I would not mind a Panthers-Colts Super Bowl, even if it's the Colts winning. It does not matter to me. Of course, I, it's kind of like, I know it's you're not supposed to, but outside of the Bears, I kind of am like Packers first, kind of division rival win it, only because I'm thinking like, okay, so if the NFC wins a Super Bowl, it makes the Packers look better and it makes the NFC North look better in general. But and as your rival, you don't want him to catch up. I don't know. I think... If you're a, anyone but a Packers fan in the NFC North, you don't want someone else to win a Super Bowl because obviously it makes you look bad and look at Ferguson. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, what do you guys think? Are you guys just like, ah, oh, screw the rivals? I know there's some teams and some divisions that are like that. I'm kind of like, eh, I mean, if someone's going to win it, it would be nice to show off the division, I guess, right? Because, like, it, it's, I don't know, it's tough because you get crap talk from your division rivals. But at the same time, other divisions and conferences will talk crap. It's like, oh, yeah, well, your division sucks. It's like, well, actually, we won the Super Bowl three out of ten years or three out of five years, so suck it, you know? I don't know. It's weird. But obviously, I would rather have the NFC win it as long as it's a team that's new and it's a player that's new and it's not that, that one old guy everyone talks about. Sorry, Colts fans. I'm kind of talking over your Super Bowl moment here. Uh, let's take a look at Judy. Of course, it's not really the Colts Super Bowl moment, right? Like, we don't know who the quarterback is going forward. It could be Carson Wentz long-term if he ever stays healthy. 
And obviously a lot of the original Colts players here are gone. Uh, but we did still keep some of them, right? Like we had uh, Darius Leonard. We brought back Hooker, which I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Uh, you know, Julian Blackman, Buckner. Uh, there was someone else, too. I know there's some offensive players. Obviously, like, basically the uh, majority of the offensive line. You know, we kept the running back, who is obviously a massive part of this thing. None of the wide receivers, not the tight end, which, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, we had four starting Colts linemen. Quarterback was obviously... Oh, he had a, actually went up to X-Factor as well. Leonard went up to X-Factor. A lot of the original players for the Colts, some drafted and a decent bit of talented trade pieces. Of course, this ended up pretty damn good. I like what we had here. And who's on the thumbnail? Who goddamn knows? But yeah... Let me know what you guys thought of this. If you guys want to see more of these types of fantasy style rather than just straight up realistic, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what team. And also, it lets me know by you leaving a like, maybe subscribing. I don't know. Do people share videos these days? I don't know if they do. Uh, maybe follow me on Twitter, Jean Picare, second channel, Picare Plays, and twitch.tv slash Jean Picare for streams, which, once again, we will have one later tonight around probably 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. But that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you guys uh, have a good rest of your weekend. And we'll be back, as always, with more content the following week. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for the next video. But until next video, see ya!